Hi, I'm Tammy cook Andrews, science educator in the Teacher Institute. Here at the Exploratorium, our exhibits are designed to help you engage with phenomena in the world around us. Some of those exhibits are designed to model things that are way too small to see with the naked eye. This is one of my favorites. It's called Gas Model. It lets you explore how gases like air behave. We're going to check it out. When the machine is turned on, each ball in the chamber represents a molecule of a gas. Each one has energy that makes it move around. In the case of real gas molecules, adding energy in the form of heat makes them move faster. In this case, the balls gain energy when the base vibrates more. Molecules in a gas are constantly moving, just like in this model. Let's do it again. But this time, I want you to focus on what you hear. Try closing your eyes for a minute. Do you hear that sound? Every time one of the balls hits the chamber, the base, or the lid, it exerts a force on whatever it hits. Air molecules do the same thing. We call the combination of all of the forces of the collisions on the inside of the chamber pressure. The more times you hear the ball slam into the container in a given amount of time, or the harder it hits, the higher the pressure. Now these balls are much bigger than gas molecules, so you can hear them every time that they hit a surface. That isn't true with gas molecules. But there are so many tiny gas molecules that they can still exert quite a force even though they're so small. What do you think you can do to cause the pressure to increase? Did you consider increasing the energy that you add? If I turn this dial, it will make this plate at the bottom vibrate more quickly and add more energy to the system. What do you think is going to happen as I increase the amount of energy I add? Now watch and listen to what happens. You may notice that the pressure seems to increase for a split second, but then something else changes. Because the balls are moving faster, they're pushing harder on the lid, causing the lid to move up. As a result, when the amount of space in the chamber, or the volume of the chamber increases, the pressure goes back down. But imagine what would happen if I could keep the volume constant. What would happen to the pressure? We actually have a version of this exhibit that you can build at home so you can play with molecules more. We call our do-it-yourself at home version snacks. Here I have a wire basket that's filled with table tennis balls and two pieces of cardboard that are going to frame these table tennis balls. Now, unlike that exhibit over there, um, this one, the top can't move up and down. And these balls are going to represent molecules just like in the exhibit. What do you think would happen if you had a stronger hairdryer and added even more energy? What else are you wondering about? What would you like to try? What else do you think might change the pressure besides increasing the amount of energy you add? Did you say adding more molecules? We actually have another snack called Wiggle Pressure if you want to try some more investigations. When we use models in science, it's really important to remember which parts of the model really work and which don't quite fit what's really happening. Here, there's actually a lot more space in between the molecules in real life and there are many, many more of them. But models can still help us figure out how things work that we can't see. Have fun exploring.